Welcome back to the Tech Table. In this video, we'll be continuing our series on third-party hardware setup and Premiere Pro CS6. In particular, this video will feature the products from Matrox. Great products like the MX-02 Mini, full-size MX-02 Rack, one of my favorites, the MX-02 LE, great for when you're in the field or on the go and you want to bring it back to the desktop. Fantastic products. All of these products actually share a pretty unique uh, installation, and that is they're really flexible. You can actually put them in your desktop with an optional desktop card. You can make them work via Thunderbolt with a Thunderbolt adapter, or if you happen to have a laptop that has a slot in it, you can actually use a laptop adapter. Really, really flexible. Uh, you've also got great products like the new uh, Matrox Mojito that a lot of people I find don't even know about, which is a lot of this technology, including the uh, MX-02 Max, right on a card. Fantastic stuff. So I've actually asked Wayne Andrews over at Matrox to walk us through driver downloads, install tips, anything about their control panel or setup that they want to point out in particular for Premiere Pro users. Let's go check it out. Thanks, Dave. First, please make sure you are running Adobe CS6.0.2. Check this by going Premiere and About. If it's not at 6.02, do Help updates and it will update it automatically to Adobe CS6.0.2. Then let's make sure that you have the latest and greatest from from the Matrox product by going to matrox.com forward slash video then support choose your MX02 family or Mahito Max downloads Mac OS Select your product from the list of products. Here we're using the Matrox MX02 Rack with Max software. And then choose 3.2. As you notice here on the side, we list each of applications that supported with each release. And here we're looking for Adobe Premiere 6.0.2. Hit the Go button, download, and run the install. Let's jump ahead. After ensuring Adobe is updated and installing the latest Matrox drivers, let's confirm that your hardware was installed properly by checking out the Matrox control panel under System Preferences. Here you will see in the Matrox control panel under the Info tab, the Matrox hardware has been installed correctly and is running properly. Since we are in the System Preferences, let's make sure the system audio is not set to Matrox for input or output. A common mistake is to set this to Matrox for use with Adobe Creative Suite of products. Here we'll do a headphones. The next step to ensure proper setup is to make sure that your Matrox hardware is correctly set in Premiere to take advantage of Adobe Mercury's Transmit plugin. So we'll go Premiere Pro, Preferences, Playback. Here you'll note the audio device should be set to Matrox Player. And then under the video device, unclick Adobe and check Matrox Player. Now we'll go to the audio portion of the setup, click on audio hardware, and drop down the default, default device and set it to built-in output, not Matrox MX02 rack. It needs to be set to built-in output and we'll set the buffer size to 512 and click OK. Your Matrox hardware is now configured for use with Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Creative Suite of products. Let's have a close look at the Matrox Utilities control panel and each of its individual tabs. The first tab, the Info tab, will notify you of your product that's connected, your current firmware, your software version, its serial number, and if you have a Max enabled product such as the Matrox MX02 Rack Max as we have here. In the general tab you can set your luminance to allow super white or super black or set up your analog pedestal to either 0 or 7.5 IRE. In the Genlock tab you can enable external Genlock sources or you can actually compensate for video uh, output timing of your Genlock vertical and horizontal to compensate for long cable lengths or anomalies in the Genlock signal. In the AV input tab, here is where you set your current uh, 
connected uh, external video source such as SDI HDMI and what analog or digital audio do you want to capture to. Um, it varies with different products. Uh, your screen may look a little different depending on which product you have, but they will all be displayed here. Then the next section is scaling. Scaling on capture. So if you want to do upscaling or cross conversion or downscaling on capture, here is where you enable that. Um, and also if you want to have an aspect ratio conversion during the, uh, the capture, you can set that accordingly here. In the video output tab, you can decide on what format will be outputted through the box. Follow application will, f will match Adobe sequence settings one to one, or you can do up, down, or cross conversions. And then in the channel selection, you have independent individual settings for analog, SMI, or HDMI to match what is set in the main channel format or to do a down conversion, again, in real time in hardware. And then while you're doing a down conversion, you can also set your aspect ratio to follow uh, your, pref your preference, letterbox, center cut, or anamorphic. The next section when working with 3D is to enable the output of the HDMI to communicate directly with your 3D HDMI monitor, to telling it to switch to side by side or over under top bottom. And then under the miscellaneous, we have the ability to show first or second field or both fields when working with interlace to set the HDMI output to YUV RGB native or RGB calibrated or set the component to YUV or RGB all done in hardware with proper uh, color, case, color space conversions and then the final feature is the ability to calibrate a HDMI monitor to broadcast specifications it's a little wizard that you would launch and run through and by the end of it, uh, by following a series of questions and answering of what you're viewing on your output of your HDMI monitor, your monitor would then be calibrated so you can trust it for colors and color correction. The next tab we'll look at is the audio output. Here, Matrox has a audio mapping option. When enabled, you can then slice and dice and send different stereo tracks from Adobe's timeline to specific outputs so you can do real-time audio mapping mixing on all of our audio outputs and also set the HDMI if you want all eight channels or if you want it just to have a stereo pair to come out the next tab we'll look at is the matrix for Vank tab matrix for Vank is a patent pending technology and technique of capturing, preserving, and then playing back uh, AFD and closed captioning. Uh, we preserve them in an audio track in 15 and 16 and work with Adobe Premiere to, again, preserve, edit, and output high def and standard def closed captionings in either an SDI VANC, SDI Line 21, or Analog Line 21, or all of the above simultaneously. The last tab we'll have a look at is the WYSIWYG tab. What you see is what you get. In the video format drop down option, you would set what video output you would like either Adobe Photoshop or After Effects to output through the MXO2 box. You can match it to be one to one uh, or set it to any of the available uh, options out that you see here. And then you can actually have to show alpha channel or have the uh, output image scale to fit the monitor attached. I'd like to thank Dave for having me on this edition of Tech Table. My name is Wayne Andrews. Thank you for watching.